Hello and welcome to another ASP.NET Core coding tutorial from Round the Code. Now in this video we're going to be looking at Swagger and how we can implement Swagger into our ASP.NET Core web API. The advantage of Swagger is that you can also list all your endpoints, your API endpoints, but you can also test them as well. Now for more ASP.NET Core coding tutorials visit roundthecode.com Subscribe to my YouTube channel at roundthecode.com forward slash YouTube and follow me on Twitter, it's at roundthecode. Now on the screen you can see we've got a Visual Studio application, it's got an API in there, a web API. So we're going to go ahead and implement Swagger into our application. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to Tools and NuGet Package Manager Console because we need to install a NuGet package. So to do that we go to install package and we're going to be installing swashbuckle for ASP.NET Core. So it's just going ahead and installing it for us. So that's all done. So now we need to go ahead and make some configuration changes to the startup file. So we're going to the startup class and in here we're just going to simply add services.addSwaggerGen like so and then in the configure what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top here and we're going to add two commands in here we've got the add swagger and we also want the swagger ui and we're going to pass in an options in this so we're just going to set a swagger endpoint here so this points to swagger v1 swagger.json and we just need to give it a name as well of round the code. Like so, okay, so that's all we need to do now. Now we're gonna run our API and see if we've actually got the Swagger documentation in there. So that's just building for us now. So once that's started, we'll give it a test. Okay, so you see at the moment it's coming up with 404 page not found. That is because by default the actual Swagger documentation is in forward slash Swagger. So here we go, we've got our documentation here. We've got our endpoints here for league and team as well. So if we um, test out one of these just to see if it works, so we can click on the try it out button. And there we go, it's just testing for us. There we go, we've got 200 response back. We've got a response body and we've also got some headers that are returning. So that's all good. So the next thing we want to do though is what if we want to run it at root level? You know, an API might not have anything normally at root level, so it might be good to have the Swagger documentation there. So if we go to Swagger UI again, what we can do is we can set the options.root prefix and we can just set that to empty. So if we run that again, so hopefully now it should have it should root the Swagger documentation to the root level. So we're now getting a 404 on Swagger. If we go to the root level, you can see now we've got the documentation at root level. All, all's good so far. So the next part, what we need to do is we want to be able to display comments in here because at the moment it doesn't really tell us what these endpoints are actually doing so what we can do with that is if we go into one of our controllers so we're going to go into our leak controller here and i'm going to add some comments up here so it's three forward slashes and then in the summary we're going to put that it creates a new instance of leak in addition to that, we need to do some configuration changes as well. We basically need to add the fact that it needs to be able to read our comments from somewhere. So in order to do that, you can include XML comments, and I'll show you how to do that. First things first, though, we go back up to our Swagger gen up here. We pass in options. So first of all, we need to get the XML file. 
So we need to use reflection here to get the location of the assembly. So it's assembly dot executing assembly dot get name name dot XML. Then we need to confine the file path with the actual directory path. So in order to do that, we use path.combine, go to the base directory of the app context, and that will navigate us, that will basically give us the full path for where our comments are gonna be stored. Last, what we need to do is we basically need to call this include XML comments and just pass in the full path like so. Okay, so let's give that a run and see if it's going to work. So we shouldn't have any issues compiling it. It should be running like so. So let's give it a refresh. Now we have a 500 error here. Now the reason for this 500 error is because we haven't actually turned on XML comments. You need to go ahead and do that. So in Visual Studio, it's quite simple. You right click on the project concerned, go down to properties. And then if we go into the build tab, which we're already in, we need to go right down here click on that. Now we can go ahead and run it and all being well, that should work for us. Let's give it a go. Yeah, so there we go. It's running for us again. And you can see here, we've got a comment on here. So it creates a new instance of league in this particular endpoint here. So the last thing I want to do is I basically want to see if we can actually ignore particular endpoints. Um, if there's a particular endpoint that's a bit too sensitive or we don't want to show it to the end user, then I want to see how we can go about actually hiding particular endpoints from the Swagger documentation. So it's relatively straightforward with this. So we're going to look at the league endpoint here. So all we really need to do is we need to go into here pass in a parameter of X API Explorer settings. And inside there, we've got this property here of ignore API. We can just set that to true. And it's as simple as that. So if we go ahead and run the application, hopefully now it should just be the team endpoints that are shown and not the league. So let's give that a go. So there we go. We've got the teams on there, but we haven't got the league. We've managed to remove that. So we've managed to remove API endpoints that we don't particularly want to be shown in the Swagger documentation. So one thing to bear in mind with Swagger is security. You may not necessarily want your endpoints to be shown at production level. Also, your endpoints should be protected by OAuth security, and Swagger has good support for that. Now, thanks very much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.